Pieri from uh, Politecnico di Milano. So Ilario is going to talk about the uh, polygonal discontinuous galactic oh, method oh, for oh. propagation problems in couple poro elastic acoustic media. Thanks, Ilario. The stage is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Paola, for the introduction, and also thank you very much to the organizer for the invitation. Uh, this work is joint work with uh, Paola. Antonietti, Michele Botti, and Simone Natti Poltri from the, the Politecnico di Milano. So um, the, the study of combining propagation of pressure and elastic wave through porous materials is um, say arises uh, in different engineering disciplines, uh, such as the vibroacoustics or computational geosciences or biomedical engineering or even civil engineering, just to mention a few. And this multi-physical problem uh, po possibly involves uh, nonlinear nonlinearities, uh, and also uh, we have thin structure and highly heterogeneous materials, uh, as, uh, and also scattered fields at eight frequencies more wavelength. So it, it's uh, say very complicated. And moreover, we need also to properly represent the hydraulic contra that at the interfaces. So in order to tackle this problem, we decided to discretize it or to, yeah, to discretize it with this continuous galactic method on polytopal grids. This because uh, DG methods on polytopal grids allows for uh, max flexibility so that we can consider arbitrary complex interfaces and different coupling condition. Uh, we can easily uh, do local mesh refinement uh, as, we, as we saw this morning. Uh, and we can achieve a order accuracy, and this is very important for uh, for wave propagation problem in order to capture uh, to well capture the, the the wave scattering. Uh, and fi finally, through the DG DG method, is the, the implementation in in a parallel architecture is very easy. So uh, here I report a small bibliography concerning this uh, multi physical problem, and I. Uh, I like to, to divide this into different categories. So such as, for instance, this linear last acoustic coupling. So different uh, approaches and different discretization techniques. Uh, then we have- also Sorry, Lario, you should speak closer to the microphone. Ah, okay. Here, you can hear me here. Now, it's better. I can hear, Ilario. Is yeah. there a... Now you can hear me. I can hear fine now, oh, yes. Okay. okay. Well, uh, then we have uh, some, some work on waves in porous materials. And, and finally, the, the, the couple problem, the porolastic acoustic couple, uh, couple problem, uh, considered in different re recent work, um, in which uh, uh, I would like to mention this uh, uh, arbitrary derivative scheme that actually treated the same uh, the same problem that we are going to discuss today. So our contribution here that, that it is the development and the analysis of polytopal DG scheme for this couple problem, the poor last acoustic. And uh, here I refer to this preprint for for all the details. So uh, the governing equation is written in a domain uh, omega that is split into two subdomain, omega p that is the poor elastic domain and omega e that is the acoustic one. The two domains share a common interface that is denoted by gamma i. So in the uh, poor elastic domain, we consider basically the no, the no stationary view equation, uh, whereas in the acoustic domain, we consider the scalar wave equation. So, so we decided to uh, stick with uh, the so-called two displacement formulation because um, uh, so the, the, the reason will, will be more clear uh, later on. And uh, in the poroelastic domain, the unknown are the elastic displacement U and the filtration displacement W, whereas in the acoustic domain, we have the acoustic potential T. So uh, as a constitutive equation for the, uh, for the poor elastic domain, we consider basically the uh, sigma is related to the stress tensor, uh, sorry, to the, to the strain tensor as the Hughes law minus an identity tensor proportional to the pressure. And the pressure here is written in terms of the sum of divergence of the elastic and the filtration displacement. Uh, in the acoustic domain, we can retrieve the uh, acoustic pressure by multiplying the time derivative of the 
acoustic potential by the, uh, the density of the material, the acoustic material rho A. So in the equation appear many, uh, many different parameters. Uh, so we have the different definition of uh, density, soil fluid density, and also we have dynamic viscosity eta here that multiplies the time derivative of the filtration. Uh, velocity and the absolute permeability and other say parameter that we have listed here that so I skip for brevity uh, well uh, as a boundary condition here we prescribe for simplicity Dirichlet condition we also suppose that we have some initial condition and then to to say to close the system you have to consider some uh, suitable interface condition on the interface so first of all we consider the continuity of pressure load so here I, I wrote PA in the acoustic domain, but say it is important to know that we were using this rho A phi dot. Uh, then we have the continuity of the normal component of the velocity field. And again, here the velocity in the acoustic domain is nothing but the gradient of the acoustic potential. And finally, we uh, consider the continuity of the pressure field across the interface. So we have three conditions to take uh, to deal with. And uh, in particular, for the third condition, we have this parameter tau that uh, give us the, the possibility to model different uh, pore configuration at the interface. In particular, for tau equal to zero, we have the C4 condition, that is this right one. Uh, for tau equal to one, the upper pore condition. Uh, and finally, for tau in between zero and one, we have an imperfect condition that is say, something in between the seed and open uh, pore condition. So we immediately see that for the open pore condition, so tau equal to one, we have the continuity of the pressure between the, the pore elastic and the acoustic domain. Whereas in the seed pore condition, we have that, so tau equal to zero, so we have the uh, filtration velocity, uh, the normal component is zero. So we have the continuity, the, the second condition can be expressed in this form. Okay, so we have the continuity of the velocity the normal component and the velocity in which the, the filtration velocity disappear. And then we have jump of pressure across the interface. So under the say suitable regularity hypothesis, we're able to prove that the uh, solution is, uh, is unique, exists and it is unique. And this is given in term, uh, say in the framework of the Hille-Yoshida theorem basically. Well, uh, as concerned the discretization, here we consider a polytopic regular mesh, tau H, made by two different polytopic uh, uh, regular meshes, tau H P for the pore elastic domain and tau H A for the acoustic domain. So uh, this is a uniformly regular, and this is given in terms of this condition. So uh, this condition uh, allows us to have uh, uh, the presence of gen degenerating phases, and, and finally, we suppose to have uh, HP uh, local bounded variation for for um, for our uh, for our analysis in order to avoid technicality. So in summary, what we have is that we can apply trace inverse inequality on polytopical element, and we have approximation result in uh, standard approximation result in the space of polynomials of order p. Well, uh, for the SQL, we will use standard notation for the definition of jump and average operator that is say. Uh, commonly used for the, 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 DG, uh, the DG approximation. Well, the, the weak formulation is written then for our problem in this form. So we have VHP, VHA is the space of polynomial of order P, P and P, A in the pore elastic and acoustic domain. And here in the weak formulation, we have uh, four bilinear form, M, A, B, C. Uh, uh, yes, and that defines that define different terms. So M, the bilinear form M, defines the mass inertial terms. So, so it is uh, basically mass, mass terms. Uh, the AH bilinear form instead is the sum of three contributions. So AHE is the contribution, say, given by the elastic part in our poro, poro elastic domain. AHP instead is the contribution given by, let me say, by the, the, the porous part. So here, basically, what we have is that um, is the bilinear form referring to the pressure, basically. And indeed, here we control only the normal component of the jump, as the problem suggests. And here we have to pay attention because uh, uh, depending on the parameter, though, we have different definition of the bilinear form. 
And in particular, in the case tau equal to zero, so that is the um, seed board condition, we have to consider also as uh, phases the interface phases in which we stabilize our, uh, our bilinear form. And finally, in the uh, acoustic domain, we have the, the, say, let me say, the standard symmetric uh, interior penalty Galerkin formulation for the uh, acoustic potential. And here, again, we have stabilization parameter, alpha, gamma, and, and key that are, say, suitable stabilization parameter that are, say, commonly, the, the definition, I didn't report the definition, but say, is it, somehow standard in polygonal element. Uh, well, other terms is B, that is the damping term, and uh, B contains not only the damping term here, but also the pore condition at the interface. So here, the pore condition is introduced in terms of this function zeta, that depends on tau, for sure. And for tau equal to zero, this is uh, uh, absent. And finally, we have the coupling term that is uh, that are inside this bilinear form CP and CA, that, as you can see, that are skew symmetric. Well, for the concerning the analysis of this problem, we first analyze the stability of the problem and we introduce an energy norm. So this is quite involved, this definition, but actually is the mechanical energy of the problem. So it's the sum of the mechanical energy in the poroelastic domain plus, uh, the, uh, yes, the sum of this one and the mechanical energy in the acoustic domain. So, um, uh, here, this is the, uh, let me say, kinetic energy, and then we have the potential energy. For sure, the potential energy here uh, for the variable Z is measured as a semi-norm, and this is actually is a semi-norm, this in the space BHP, but actually when you sum up this semi-norm with the term DGE and the bilinear form B, this uh, turns out to be a norm. So this is uh, the, the good norm to, 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 to use for this problem. And then using this problem, we were able actually to, uh, to prove that the, the solution is stable in the sense that depends continuously on the problem's data that are the initial condition here and the right-hand side, the forcing term. And what is important here that the constant that is hidden here does not depend on the uh, on the toe that is the uh, the one the parameter that determines the pore condition at the interface and so from this we can conclude that the g formulation is dissipative but this somehow uh, expect expected for the g formulation and as concerned the energy uh, error estimate so we can measure the error through the the, the norm that we have uh, introduced so far and we can see that again we have optimal rate of convergence with uh, uh, with respect to the, the polynomial degree and suboptimal with the uh, uh, sorry uh, optimal rate of convergence with respect to the mesh size and suboptimal with respect to the uh, polynomial degree. And again, here uh, it's important to note uh, to notice that the the constant does not depend on on tau. Uh, well, for the time integration of the problem, we uh, uh, rewrite the, the, the system in terms of, um, say, we obtain uh, a second order differential equation, and we discretize it with the new mark beta scheme. And we, uh, we decided to stick with this parameter, so gamma n equal to one half and beta n uh, equal to one fourth in order to obtain an unconditionally stable, so implicit and second order accurate scheme. And this, uh, because so we want to, to stay with an implicit scheme because we want to avoid any restriction given by the, the, the time step. So the uh, restriction on the time step given by the CFL condition. And this is uh, somehow crucial in wave propagation problem. Uh, well, let me go to the numerical experiment. So first of all, I would like to, to discuss a little bit the verification test. So we have a manufactured solution um, for which we can compute initially condition forcing term uh, and what is needed for the analysis and here I reported the parameter below that we use um, so we want to first of all analyze the conversion with respect to the mesh size so to verify actually the convergence with respect to the mesh size and uh, yes here we, we decided to use a polynomial degree equal to three in both the subdomains and, and indeed we, we retrieve the expected order of convergence that it is h to the power three uh, well, instead for the uh, convergence with respect to the polynomial, so since here the solution is uh, infinitely many regular, uh, here we expected uh, an exponential rate of convergence, and indeed it is uh, 
observed from our simulation and yes so here the simulation that i show you uh refers to the case two equal to zero so the seal for condition but actually the same result can be achieved for the open and imperfect for condition well finally we also compute the l2 norm of the error the l2 norm of the error of the uh, of the pressure um, and okay the, the pressure is obtained as a post process of the solution but uh, again we we obtain the expected rate of, of convergence uh, for for the pressure that for for norm equal to three is actually x to the power two well now we move to a, a physical experiment so physically driven experiment so here we have a, a oblique interface that that divided the the domain omega p and omega a in the table here list all the parameters of our of our simulation in particular here we said the dynamics viscosity is zero and indeed the, the problem is just to check uh, if the uh, interface condition different kind of interface condition work uh, from a, a numerical point of view so we decided to to uh, choose this value for tau so zero one and ten to the minus eight just to mimic the sealed open and imperfect condition and the forcing term is just this um, point source given in four points here uh, blue in the acoustic domain uh, so a direct delta here more or less uh, in space whereas in time is a smoothed sinus function uh, well this is the the snapshot say the movie of the solution obtained for different four configuration at the interface so from this is evident the fact that for open pore condition, we have the continuity of the pressure across the interface. For the seed pore condition, instead, you have a jump uh, that is clearly visible here of the pressure, whereas for the imperfect pore condition, this is a, a situation that is in between the two. Okay. Well, finally, uh, I would like to show you that the last example in which we have, again, a, a more complex interface given by a sinusoidal line. And here, again, instead, we test, we, we say we choose to have uh, the upper pore condition, so the continuity of the pressure across the, the interface. And here we want to test the behavior of the numerical scheme uh, for different uh, dynamics viscosity. Well, in, in one situation, we will have damping, in the other, no damping. So here, the point source is more or less the same as before. So you just scale by a factor rho a and um, well, those uh, the, these that I show you are the snapshots of the computed solution. In the first line, we have the no damping in the pore elastic domain here. So in, in, indeed, you can see after the first uh, uh, first front uh, of the wave, we have another small front standing wave here, given a, and so you can see also the effect of the interface or so the scattered field at the interface. Uh, well, in the second line, instead we have the damping that somehow killed this second front. And, and so here I would like just to conclude my talk, just to uh, tell you that uh, we analyzed this pore elastic acoustic problem and we proved the, that the, 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 the problem is well posed and also prove uh, HP convergence result for the DG method on polytopal grids. And we verified the, the scheme and we applied it to at the moment two uh, dimensional test cases. So in the future, we would like to implement these strategies for more realistic three dimensional cases and actually to deal with uh, another more physical problem that is say couple this bio equation with uh, the, the Navier-Stokes system. So we just substitute the acoustic uh, equation with the, the Navier-Stokes equation. And yes, I, I'm done. Thank you very much for the, for the attention.